Hi friends, welcome back to another episode of So Honey Bee. In today's video, I will be doing another tutorial for sophisticated grouse designs, and it's for the Travelizer. Now this is another pattern in her travel series. So let me open this up and show you what's inside. It is a four panel bag for toiletries, sewing products, anything that you would like to store in here. There's a top panel, okay, with two pockets. There's two large main panels, okay, and they're pretty deep. And then you have a bottom panel as well. Now, this folds up pretty easy and then zips up and has handles at the top as well as a crossbody strap. Now, I wouldn't say that this pattern is for a beginner, but I will say if you have sewn the fold and zip backpack, you can do this one. I know you can. Now, there were a few little problems that I had in making this bag. I'm not trying to say that you cannot make this bag or that you shouldn't because it's hard by any means. But I am saying that you do have to really pay attention to detail in which way each panel goes when you're sewing it together. Because some of them are upside down and some of them are right side up. So I guess what I'm really trying to say is that I needed a tutorial. <laughs> well, I know you can sew up this bag. And it's definitely one that you are going to want to add to your travel series. Now for the exterior, I used vinyl and the piping I used vinyl as well. For the interior, I used a waterproof canvas, pulled over elastic for all of the binding, and waterproof canvas for the inside lining. Now I am using an industrial machine, so it went together pretty easily. That doesn't mean you have to have an industrial machine to make up this little bag. I know that some of the testers did in fact use domestic machines. And one of them even used a vintage domestic machine. So I know it can be done. Now I know that the promotional sale is already passed, but you can still get this pattern because Jassy has given us a coupon code. And you can find that in the description below. Now there is an affiliate link down there as well. So you can go over to the website put in your coupon code and both of us win. And I have used some of the items from Sophisticated Supplies in making this little bag. So you can see how they work. And Jassy has a pre-order coming up real soon. So I know you're gonna wanna check it out. Now it really helps me out when you subscribe and like this video. So thanks if you've already done so. And like the other tutorials, this one also has testers tips. And this is a so long tutorial. So if you get stuck on any of the steps, you can go down to the description below, find that step, click on the timestamp, and you can watch that portion of the tutorial again. Okay, I think that is all the stuff. <laughs> now let's get started right with our strap. Okay, with step number one. I have my webbing here. Okay, and I've cut it to the measurement that she has on the pattern. I have two lobster clasps a slider, and four rivets. Now you don't have to use rivets to do your strap. There are two different ways that she gives you that you can do it. If you are using seat belt webbing, don't forget to cinch your edges so that there is no fraying. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my slider and put one end of my webbing right through there just like that. Now, I want to fold this down and then bring it down over here. Now, you can sew across here and that'll be just fine. Or you can just put two rivets or even one rivet. It's up to you. Now, I'm using a silver vinyl marker and this is one that I got from Sophisticated Supplies. And you can put it in any ink pen that will fit it. So now I just want to put two small points there and that's where I'm going to put my rivets. Now before I add my rivets, I want to be sure that I'm going to treat my webbing since I put holes in it. So I'm doing that with some fray check. Go ahead and put your cap on. Now you can set this right now. That's what I'm going to do since I have my press right here. So now this is the right side up. 
I want to bring this through here like this. I'm going to put my slider so that it is on there like that. Then take my other side of my webbing, making sure that it is not um, tangled. So just like that. Now I want to take this end and do the same thing on this side. Now there are a lot of different ways that you can put on your hardware onto your strap. It's up to you to choose how you want to do it. Okay, it's as simple as that. So now our webbing is done and we can bring out our tabs and get started on that because that's our next step. Okay, so now I have my tabs here. Now your tab is going to be this width, but the length here. The reason why mine is already cut into is because I'm going to make my top um, lobster clasp for holding on to the whole bag. I'm doing it out of an inch and a half. Whereas the D-rings, they're an inch. Okay, so I have two inch D-rings here and one lobster class that's an inch and a half. Now I've drawn a line down the center and I've added double stick tape. Now I wanna pull my ends into the center. And do the same thing to this one. Okay, so now we are going to stitch or top stitch all four sides. Now your piece will be one complete length. On step number four, she gives you a measurement and you'll see that in the picture there. Okay, for you to cut each one of these. So you should have two tabs for your two D-rings and then this one here for a total of three pieces. So there's my three pieces. Now I'm going to put them on my D-rings. And I'm trying to conserve my thread, so I have my bobbin in black, whereas I have my top thread in rainbow. So in case you're wondering. <laughs> okay, now we're on step number five. I want to grab my long tab and I want to mark one inch from the bottom or the end. Now place double stick tape to the short ends of the tab. Fold each end right to the measurement that you have just marked. Okay, so there's our tabs. So now, they're all complete. Let's set them aside until we need them again. So now we're on step number six, which is our strap handles. Now take your straps and cut them into two equal pieces. Do not forget to treat your edges. Now in step number six, she gives you a measurement. Okay, you can see that I've marked those measurements on both ends. Okay. Now you can see here, I'm laying them right on top of each other, one above the other. Now that is because I want to make sure that the center measurement is equal on both because this is going to be for our straps. So I want to make sure that my straps are even. Okay, so you can see there that my measurements are correct. So you can use double stick tape if you want. Do not go beyond your marking. Just put it in the middle. Now I want to top stitch this edge closed, okay, between those two markings. So I'm going to go ahead and change out my thread and my bobbin to a purple. Now normally I would do all the purple first, 
<laughs> do all the black next, all the rainbow. But since I'm doing it step by step and showing you, I will be going back and forth with my thread. So let me change out my thread and then I'll be right back. So now I want to start and end at my marking. Okay, my straps are completely done. So now I'm going to set these aside and go on to the next step. So now put the tape down the center of your vinyl. And I'm using half inch double stick tape. Take off the paper and fold your piping in half. Now if you're going to use a cording for your piping, go ahead and put the cording down the center of your strip here and then fold it over. Our next step is doing our stabilizer, which is step number eight. Go ahead and grab your stabilizer and your exterior. Now I'm using Sophisive Foam from Sophisticated Supplies for this project for my front and back panel. Now it's really easy to use. You just peel it and stick it on. Now if you are using a foam stabilizer or a Peltex or any other kind of stabilizer, go ahead and adhere it to your front and back panels according to the manufacturer's instructions. Okay. Okay. So now I've marked my seam allowances all the way around, which is a quarter of an inch. So what makes this so easy is that you just peel and stick. Okay. So I want to make sure that I am inside my seam allowance because when I go to bind this at the end I want to make sure that I'm not going to have this foam interfere with my seams. It makes it so much easier at the end. Okay. And as you can see also you can pick it up and move it. So it's just the right amount of stickiness. Okay, so there. It's all completely attached outside of my seams and everything. So just within a matter of seconds, it's all done. So now let's go ahead and do the same thing to this one over here. I was real surprised to see that the shipping wasn't as much as I thought from Singapore to Fresno, California. Step number eight is all done. That was so easy. So now on step number nine, it is attaching the logo tag to the front portion of your bag. Now I don't have a logo tag, so I'm gonna skip down to step number 10. Okay, so here is my sides with the piping on it, okay? And I'm using a faux piping, which is just a piece of vinyl that is one inch wide just like the pattern calls for and then I just folded it over. So let me show you how I did that. So here's my vinyl piece. So now put the tape down the center of your vinyl. And I'm using half inch double stick tape. Okay now take off the paper and fold your binding or your piping in half. Now if you're going to use a cording for your piping Go ahead and put the cording down the center of your strip here and then fold it over. Okay. Now I want to find the center of my bag. Okay. Now you can see here that I have not added double stick tape or anything on the end. Okay, so I want to just leave it like that. I want to put the edge with the edge and then clip it going all the way around and as I'm going around the corners I want to snip into the vinyl no more than one eighth of an inch to help it to go around the corners. Okay. 
Now I'm going to fold that down. Here's my center right here with my snip. I'm going to fold both of those so that they're lining up right with each other on there. Then I'm going to clip it right where that center mark is. There's my center and I've clipped it like that. Okay. Now I'm going to get an end, put it right down the center, then fold it over. Okay, so now I'm going to baste it all the way around using a 1 8 inch seam allowance. Use your hemostat if you have to, or whatever tool of choice that you have. on really well. The piping is on both of my panels. Okay, so now let's go on to the next step. Okay, now we are on step number 13. And that is applying our handle in our D-ring. Okay, and you can see here that I've already done it on this panel. Now on step number 13, she gives you a measurement both from the distance of the handle to the handle and also from the distance of your center point to the left and to the right. And then you just add your D-ring to the left of this left side of the handle. Now, you want to make sure that you have right side to right side. This is the right side and this is the wrong side. So we want to put right sides to right sides. So I've already made my markings here, my center marking, and then I went to the left and made my marking, went to the right and made my marking. Grab a couple of clips and clip that right there. Making sure that right side's the right side. Okay. Then do the same thing on this side. And then the D ring goes to the left. Just like that. Okay. Make sure that your handle is on the outside of that line. Just like that. Okay, so now I want to base this on using a 1 8 inch seam allowance. Okay, just like that. Okay, so now I have my two elastic bands, which I'm using one inch fold over elastic. I have my mesh pocket, and this is um, the fine mesh from Sophisticated Supplies. And so this is a really, really nice mesh. And then I have my binding for that. And then I have my two lining panels. So I'm going to start off with my mesh pocket, first of all. So I'm going to put these three aside for right now. So now the first thing I want to do is I want to get double stick tape and place it down the center right here. And now I want to put the double stick tape along the top edge and then fold it over. Now you're going to sew this on top stitch it using a one quarter inch seam allowance, but my binding is wider than is called for. So I'm going to just go ahead and top stitch it along this edge here. I almost forgot to put my little tag in here. And if you are going to add a tag, make sure that it is far enough away from this seam allowance so that it doesn't get messed up. Okay, just like that. Okay, so now 
I want to grab my lining and I want to place this on here. Okay, and so now I want to line my bottom edge along here, okay? But what I'm going to do is I'm going to, because I want to make sure that this is really straight. So I'm going to put that like that and I'm going to snip into here just like that. Okay, now I'm going to fold this in half. Snip my upper corner on my upper half. And then I'm going to snip on this side so that both panels or both sides of my pocket are correct. Okay, so now I can add this to this snip side then do the same thing over here. Just like that. Now I want to baste all the way around using a 1 8 inch seam allowance and my stitch length again is at a 5 still. Now I want to go ahead and cut down the excess of the mesh. Now I want to fold this in half because we are going to split this slip pocket into two. So let's fold it in half. And one thing about this canvas is it's real easy to hold a crease in there. Okay, just like that. So now let's do the other inside panel. Now on step 16, she gives you some measurements as to where you are going to place these and where you're going to stitch them. So now I have found my four corners, the two top and the two sides. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add those markings from step 16 and then we'll put on the elastic pieces. Okay, I've marked my measurement here, this is my center, I'm going to mark going up and down, marked my center here, dividing the top panel into two, and then marked this here, dividing the bottom panel into three. Now I'm going to get the shiny side of my fold over elastic, I'm going to pin it right there. Okay, now I'm going to get the other one, do the same thing. Okay, now I'm going to transfer my markings to the top portion. Be sure not to run over any of your pins. The next one. So just like that. So now we could put perfume, um, lotion, shampoo, conditioner, whatever kind of bottles that we want to put inside of here. So that one is complete. Okay, so now I have my two exteriors and my two interior panels for the main pocket. So let me put that aside. Now right now we're going to have a choice which panel will go with which front or back. Now this tip is a tester's tip and it was such a good tip that Jassy added it as an option in the pattern. This tip is for you to add snaps here if you want to for the mesh pocket. Now you want to add the snaps on the binding to keep things stored inside. So if you put the mesh pocket on the bottom panel you want to add the snaps on the binding to keep things stored inside because it will hang upside down when carried, okay? And now that is if you put it on the bottom panel. And Jesse gives you that choice, whether you want to put it on the bottom or the top. So now we have to determine what is your front, which is your back, okay? Both of mine are exactly the same, so I can use either one. 
But if you have a definite front and a definite back, you have to decide for yourself which panel is going to go with which piece. I'm going to do it the way she has it in the pattern. For the front panel, she has the slip pocket with the front panel. Now in step number 18, she shows you the direction that you have to put it. So now, you are going to have to have your slip pocket right side up. Okay, so this is the top part. This is the bottom part. And you're going to put it wrong sides together with the exterior going the same direction. You will notice that on step 18, she gives you arrows as to which direction, which piece goes to which piece. So I want to go ahead and match up my center with my center, bottom with the bottom. And I know this is the center right here, or that's where we sewed the split in that slip pocket. So this is my front panel. Okay, now go ahead and add the other one to the bottom panel. Okay, so this is our top panel. And this is our bottom panel. Now we want to make sure that this panel was also going in the right direction. Now on the back panel, we have to make them go in the opposite direction. On step number 19, she shows you arrows as to which way they should go. This is my top of my lining and the bottom. I know that because this has the two pockets and this here has the three pockets. On my exterior back, this is my top. I want them going in the opposite direction. So I'm going to put this one right side up with my handle here, put this one upside down. So now you see how there's two and then three here, okay? So I wanna again match my center with my center then do the same thing to the bottom and then go all the way around. Now baste all the way around using a 1 8 inch seam allowance and be sure that the handles aren't in the way. Now if you're using piping be sure that when you are going around the corners that your piping is laying correctly and laying flat so that it doesn't get caught in the stitches when we're basting it all the way around. Now we're on step 20 and she has pictures of both panels. Be sure that everything is correct. If not, readjust where needed. Look at how this so fizz of fuse is completely right where I want it, right here. And it is completely out of my seam there. So that's gonna work really nicely when I go to bind this. Really like it. Okay, so now let's go on to our next step. Okay, now we are on our hanging mesh pocket. Now I have my binding, okay, right here, and I'm using shiny side out, and it has double stick tape on both ends, one quarter inch. Then I have my mesh pocket, my tag, my zipper pull, and then my zipper. This zipper here is the Z2 zipper, okay, so you know the length of it and which zipper it is. I have one eighth inch double stick tape on both ends, and I have a ruler. Now this ruler is going to be used for a tester's tip. Now it works better with a one inch by 12 inch ruler, but I don't have one. So this one is a three by 18, okay? So it's a little bit bigger than I wished, but saves me a trip to the store. <laughs> okay, so these are all the pieces that we need to do our um, external mesh pocket. Also, I wanted to share this with you. I am using 3D mesh from Sophisticated Supplies. Okay, so this one is the one that I'm using. I use the fine one for the inner pocket, but this one is the outer pocket, so I want it to be a little bit more um, stable. Okay, so I'm using the 3D mesh for this one. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Okay, first of all, I want to start off with adding my bias tape to my mesh pocket. So I'm going to remove the double stick tape from one side, and then place it on there and then remove the double stick tape off of the other side and then stick it on there. Okay, just like that. So now I wanna lift up on this side because don't forget to put your tag 
in here. Just make sure that it is out of your side seam on that side. Okay, just like that. Okay. Okay, now this tester's tip comes from Lynn Brown. And her tester's tip is use a ruler as a spacer between the zipper teeth and the panel so that the space is even all the way down. That's a really good tip. So my first slot rule of stitching, I want it to be right on the edge of my binding, which is 1 8 inch in. Okay, now my next row of stitching, I want it to be 1 quarter of an inch in. Okay, that's what she has on the pattern. But what I'm going to do is now I'm going to sew it right on the edge of this edge here of my binding. That did come out really straight and really good. I'm really happy with that. So now we're done with this step. So now I'm going to put this aside and then we'll go on down to working on our clear pocket. I forgot to put on the zipper pull on the mesh pocket. So let me grab that. And my, my pocket is going this way. So I want my zipper to close from right to left. So let me put it on this side. Okay, just like that okay so don't forget that because our, our next step we have to have that zipper on there okay now steps 22 through 24 are the same for all four pockets okay for all four layers you have your two center and then you have your two upper and lower so I'm going to show you on one of them and then you will do this to all four of them okay now on step number 22 she gives you a measurement for you to measure down from the top and then we are going to cut that so that's what I want to do first okay I hope you can see that there's my marking right there okay so now I'm going to go ahead and cut along that marking just like that so now that there is where our zipper is going to go okay now your next step is to put double stick tape down the center of your binding now you can also put double stick tape on both ends of your binding as well. If you wanted to do it that way too. Now I want to add my binding to each of the inside ends. Now I've got to put double stick tape on both edges of my zipper and then I will use the same um, tester's tip. With these tester's tips, what is so wonderful about them is that you can adapt them to suit your needs. For me, my hands shake really badly. So it is difficult for me to hold the ruler there and get that real straight. But now I can see that line and place that on there and it goes on really, really good. I really like this tip. For those of you who have been watching my videos for a while, you know that I have been looking for any kind of tips for putting on zippers more accurately. This one is my new way to put on zippers this way. There are a lot of other patterns that this can be used for, one being the travel belt. So I know that this one is a tester's tip that I am going to continue to use. So you can see the line right there that I drew with the silver marker, and then I was able to place that right on top, just like that. Okay, so now we're gonna do the same thing, and that is stitching two rows along the bias tape. First one right at the edge, and then the other one right next to it. So again, we have to use our zipper foot. So now let me get my zipper scissors, cut down my edges. Now treat not only your zipper end, but also your um, bias tape.
Okay, now go ahead and add your zipper pull. I want my zipper to be closing from right to left. Now, if you are wanting to watch these steps again, remember, you can go down into the description, click on step 22 timestamp, and it'll take you right back to where the beginning is for this pocket. Okay, so you can watch it as many times as you need to. Just like that. That is probably one of the best zippers I've done. <laughs> I really, really like this tip. Thanks, Lynn. <laughs> okay, so now let's do this same step to all of the panels, which are three more, okay? And then we'll go on to the next step. So now all my zipper pockets are done, okay, for the clear vinyl. Now I want to be sure to grab the lining piece that goes with the panel because there are two different sizes, okay? So I want to start off with finding my center, and this is the top center that is closest to your zipper. Okay, so we're measuring from the center. Okay, now do the same thing to your lining piece. And match the center to the center. Go ahead and clip it. So now you can see that it's clipped right on itself up here. My sides and my top are the same, but now look at the bottom, okay? So now I've got to cut down my clear vinyl to match my lining piece. So now I've clipped there. I'm going to put two more clips here to really hold this in place. And so now I can clip away the edge there. Okay, just like that. Now, the amount that you clip off of yours is going to depend on the width of your zipper, okay? So, all of ours are going to be different, but just make sure that it is the same size as your lining, and make sure that you're um, getting the right one to the right one, okay? So, those are complete. So, now I'm going to put these aside and do the same thing to my other three panels. Okay, so now all my four panels are complete. So now we can go on to the next step. Okay, we're on step number 24, and I have my mesh pocket, and I have my clear pocket. Now, on the right-hand side picture of step 24, she gives you a measurement to mark here on your clear pocket. Now, before I mark that measurement on my clear pocket, I wanna make sure that this is going to fit on there, because I notice if I mark that marking and then sew this here onto my clear pocket, when I turn this down, my mesh pocket doesn't match up to the bottom. Now, I don't know if I did something wrong. I just want to give you that tip so that in case this happens to you, that you can you can make that measurement and correct it before you sew it onto your vinyl, because once it's sewn onto the vinyl, there's nothing you can do about it. Now, the way you can make sure that you're going to have this right is measure from the side of your teeth right here down to the bottom or the hem of your mesh pocket. Compare that measurement to the measurement that is found in step number 24. If it is the same or very, very close to it, you're okay. But if it's not, lower your measurement on here, okay? Now mine is smaller. So I am actually gonna take the measurement that is on step number 24 and I'm going to lower it by half an inch. Okay, to make sure, because I'd rather have my pocket just a tiny bit shorter than to have this not long enough. Okay, so go ahead and take your measurement, compare it, and then transfer that measurement to your clear pocket. I'm going to go ahead and do that, and then I'll be right back. Okay, you can see my measurement there, and I actually lowered mine by half of an inch. Okay. So now I have double stick tape on the top edge of my zipper. And you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and take that off. I know I was like, put it on, but <laughs> let's take it off so that we can make sure that this goes on there really well. So now this is right side up, top to bottom, okay? I wanna put my mesh pocket right side down along that edge there, that line that we've just marked, okay? So I wanna remove my double stick tape and I'm gonna place it right on that line. Okay. Now, I'm going to sew right along here 
added one eighth inch seam allowance and then I'm going to sew right along my zipper at a one quarter inch seam allowance away from my zipper's edge. Then this is going to be folded down and I want to make sure that it is going to match up to meet the bottom right there. Okay, so you can see that it will. So if I would have put this marking a little higher when I folded this down, it would not have matched up to my bottom hem. Okay, so you can either make that measurement for yourself and do the math or just drop your measurement down by half an inch. So now we're on step number 25 and I want to sew one row using a 1 8 of an inch seam allowance and then I want to sew another row at an eighth of an inch seam allowance away from there. Okay so now when we fold this down it should be able to meet at the bottom here and look at how mine is like maybe an eighth of an inch longer. So now I want to um, baste all the way around this slip pocket but I'm going to baste it going from this side because I want to make sure that I'm right on the plastic or on the vinyl. Okay, so you can see how close to the edge my hem is, okay? So I'm really happy I did that. So now I want to trim away the excess mesh fabric. Okay, there's my pocket and it is complete. But guess what I did? <laughs> Do you see it? <laughs> I forgot to put in my zipper pull. So I'm gonna go ahead and unpick this from right here, put in my zipper pull, and then we'll go on to the next step. Now, I'm not trying to say that there is something wrong with the pattern. I probably measured something wrong or did something wrong because usually Jassy's patterns are spot on. So this has to be my mistake. Okay, so now I am on step number 27. And so you need your um, connectors, which is piece B4. Okay, B4. So I wanna put these right sides together. Now our seam here is going to be a 3 8 inch seam allowance. So I've set my seam guide to that measurement, okay? Now I'm trying out this seam guide, but I don't know if I like it yet because the guide is behind my needle, okay? I need the guide to be up here. So I'm trying it out and we'll see if I like it. Okay, so now both of my um, edges are sewn. Now take a sharp pair of scissors and cut away that, like that, and then like that. Grade out that seam, okay, and cut off the edges. Okay, so now I want to do a shadow stitch right on the inside of that, okay? And my stitch length is a four. So just barely inside. Okay, just like that. Okay, so now I want to put my thumb in the inside, fold this over so that it has a really sharp point right there, and then just turn it out just like that and you get a really sharp point. If you have to, you can use a point turner, but you shouldn't have to do that too much, okay? So there's my connector. Okay, now I want to put it to a five um, stitch length. I wanna move my seam guide out of the way. And now I wanna top stitch these three edges. Okay, just like that. Okay, now do the same thing to this one here. Okay, I wanna burn my threads. Now we're on step number 28. You're gonna need your exterior and your hanging hook. Now take your pattern piece, and she has a square up here. 
go ahead and cut out that square just like that if your exterior piece is a directional fabric make sure that it's going right side up now go ahead and transfer that square right there now grab your hook put some double stick tape on the back and place that right on that line right there just like that now we're going to sew an X onto right here to attach our tab to our exterior. Now for my box, I'm using the same height of the square, but of course the width of the square is going to be different. And now I will be following the stitches on my side and then sew that box. Now I want to say something that I forgot. When you're sewing on this tab, okay, if you are just using a piece of fabric or a piece of canvas, put on a piece of stabilizer in the back. Now I did not because I am using buckram and buckram is very stable, so it's its own stabilizer, okay? But if you are needing stabilizer, go ahead and put it on before you sew on this X here, the box. Okay, now my box is on there. So now we're on step 29. You're going to need the exterior that we've just finished, your lining for that exterior, your clear pocket, and your connector. So now you're going to take your exterior panel and you're going to put it right side down. You're going to take your lining piece okay, and you're going to put it right side up. You're going to take your clear vinyl and you are going to put that right side up as well. Now, all of your pieces should be the same size, okay, because we cut down our clear vinyl to match that lining piece. So now, go ahead and clip your four corners and then clip all the way around, and then we're going to baste it using a 1 8 inch seam allowance. When you get up here to the tab, be sure to move your tab out of the way. just like that okay and because my exterior is fraying so badly I'm gonna go ahead and burn it really quick and what that'll do is it'll stop it from fraying okay you should have your clear panel with the right side of your lining peeking through then your exterior with your tab on top or the exterior just plain okay now grab your connector find your center and then find your center on your panel place them right together right on the bottom edge and clip it just like that now we're going to base this onto here using a 1 8 inch seam allowance. Just like that. Okay. Now cut down your piece so that it's all one layer if you have to. Okay. Mine is just slightly. I just have to cut a slight amount off of mine. So now we're on step number 30. She gives you two different options as to binding your bag, each panel, okay? Because we have to bind all four of them. She gives you the option to use fold-over elastic, which I am going to use. You can also use waterproof canvas. And both of these are non-fraying fabrics, and so you're going to have them one inch wide. And now to follow this step, you're going to use step number 30. But if you are using double-fold bias tape, you are going to use step number 31, okay? And so I am going to be using fold over elastic, as you can see. And I want to start at the bottom and then go all the way around, okay? But before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put double stick tape on both edges.
you just like that. Now, if you are not using double stick tape for these corners, tug your elastic ever so slightly to get rid of all of these wrinkles here, okay? I couldn't do that because since I did have the double stick tape on it, it doesn't pull because the double stick tape doesn't stretch, okay? But overall, I think I'm okay with all of it. So now I wanna sew going all the way around using a one quarter inch seam allowance. Okay. And make sure that you do not run over your top tab. Now this is a tip from Jassy. When you're going around the corners, if you have difficulty, go ahead and shorten the stitch length around the corner and that will help you get around that tight corner a lot easier. Now be sure to use a hump jumper if you need to right here because you are going from your level part here to up to the connector. One thing I do like about this double stick tape is that it keeps the ends right where I want them so I don't have to mess with it when I'm stitching over them. Okay, that's all the way around and see how I caught every little bit of it on this side and then on this side as well. Okay, so now let me burn my threads. Okay. So now let's go on to our next step. Okay, now I'm on step number 33. I have my lining, my clear pocket, my exterior and my connector. Now my exterior is directional fabric, so I wanna make sure the top is at the top, okay? So I wanna put my exterior fabric right side down, top up here, okay? Then I wanna grab my lining and put it right side up, okay? So the wrong sides are meeting each other. Then I wanna grab my clear pocket and I wanna put that right side up, okay? Now let me go ahead and clip those together. So now I want to get my connector and I want to put the connector at the top. Now on the other one we put the connector on the bottom, okay? So here I want to make sure that I am putting it on my top, right in the center. That side, that side. Okay, now I want to baste all the way around using a 1 8 inch seam allowance. We are this weekend pet sitting a African gray parrot. So if you hear her in the background, I've just fed her and she's trying to get my attention to go back into the other room. Now this is complete, okay? You see that this is right side up. This is my top and my connector went on the top. Okay, so now let's go on to our next step. Now I wanted to share another tester's tip with you while I'm putting on the binding to this panel here. This one comes from Jennifer. Now she uses double fold bias tape and she does a secondary stitch because she likes having the bias tape at the edge and it helps it to lie flat. <laughs> Thanks for sharing that tip. So now you need to get pattern piece C, which are our side panels. You should have four exterior and four linings. Now let's work on our exterior first. Now place two of your exteriors right sides together on the short side. So now I'm gonna sew across here using a 3 8 inch seam allowance. I'm using my seam gauge again. Let me shorten my stitch length. Let me turn on my machine. Now if you're using a directional print, you know what to do. Okay, so now I wanna open out this seam and I wanna push my seam to the left and then top stitch along here. So let me lift that out of the way. And I wanna put my top stitch back at a five. Okay, now do the same thing to the other one.
Now, I was supposed to top stitch using a one quarter inch seam allowance, so I'm going to go ahead and do that again, doing, putting a secondary top stitch in there. Now, go ahead and add whichever stabilizer you are going to use and apply it using your manufacturer's instructions. But when applying, you just want to really make sure you keep it out of your seams, especially if you are using a domestic machine. So now I'm on step number 37. Now I want to take my gusset and I want to create a loop for the gusset. So I want to do the same exact thing to this side using a 3 8 inch seam allowance and top stitching it at a quarter of an inch. Now I'm going to put two rows of top stitching so that it matches with the other side. Okay, so now you can see here that this seam is going to the left. This seam here is going to the left as well. So if you have a non-directional print, you just want to make sure that when you're doing each seam, the top stitching, you want to make sure that the top is the top and the bottom is the bottom. Because if one of these gets turned around, you may be thinking you're doing it to the left, but you're actually doing it to the right. So go ahead and make sure that both of your seams are going to the left. Okay, so I want to set these aside and do the same exact thing to my gussets. Okay, so now we have our two exterior complete and our two lining pieces complete. Now we are on step number 38, and that is to put both of these together, one exterior, one lining, and baste along the edge of the circumference. But before I do that, I am going to put it on my stabilizer. Okay, now if you already did your stabilizer and put it in on step 36, then you're going to go ahead and move on to the next section, which is doing our zipper gusset. So what I want to do is add double stick tape to the back of my Peltex. Because my exterior is vinyl and my lining is waterproof canvas, so neither of those do I want to iron. So I'm going to go ahead and apply my stabilizer onto my gusset using double stick tape. Okay, now so using a 1 8 inch seam allowance all the way around. Okay, so now I want to turn it and clip it again on this side, matching up those seams. But this way, I'm going to sew from my lining side up. Okay, so now this gusset is complete. Now I'm going to do the same thing to this one here. And then I will be back. Now go ahead and cut away anything if you need to so that both gussets are exactly the same size. Now repair any basting that needs to be done. It's really important that the three layers are right where you want them to be. That is your exterior, your stabilizer, and your lining. So make any adjustments that you need to before you go on to the next step. This will make a huge difference at the end when we go to place these on our panels. So now I'm gonna put these aside and then go on to the next step. So now we are on step number 39 and you're going to be using zipper Z4. Now for my inside zippers, I use this size zipper pull. But for this zipper, I wanna use a more sturdier or a bigger zipper pull. And that's because I want to be able to really close this and put a little lock on it so that no one will be able to get into this bag. So go ahead and get your zipper, which is Z4, okay? And make sure that you cut it to the correct length because this zipper is not going to have anything um, cut off of it. This is our final length. And you're gonna be able to find that on page six, okay? So now, I wanna get my zipper, burn my ends, Put in my zipper pulls. So 
So put your zipper pulls in so that they are kissing each other. Now the width of this gusset is so small that I am going to be using Sofizive foam for my stabilizer for this gusset. So I want to add my stabilizer to my gusset first and as you can see it's so easy to put on there. Okay, just like that. And it's on there. Okay, so now I want to have my zipper right side up, my exterior right side down so that they are right sides meeting each other. And it's so much easier if you place your clips on the outside instead of right here. Okay, now turn your gusset around so that the wrong side of your zipper is showing. And now I want to get my lining and put it right side down. Okay, so that the right side is meeting the wrong side of my zipper. And then just reattach like that. Okay, so you should have just like that. So you should have right side to right side and then wrong side to right side. Now I want to sew across here using a one quarter inch seam allowance. And I want to shorten my stitch length to about a four. out okay. now before you sew on this other side okay make sure that you have both zipper pulls on so take your zipper make sure it's not twisted and do the same exact thing to this side right side to right side and then Make sure your lining isn't twisted. Bring it up like this, right side to wrong side. Now I just noticed on step 41, the final stitching is a 3 8 inch seam allowance. So I'm going to sew this seam allowance at 3 8 and then I'm going to go back over here and sew this at a 3 8 inch because we were supposed to only put one of them on, sew at a quarter of an inch, and then put the second one on and then sew at a 3 8 of an inch. Okay, before we turn this, we've got to reduce the bulk here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce the bulk in my lining, just like that, and in my exterior, making sure that I do not clip into those threads, but I am not going to clip my um, zipper because I want to uh, mess with that zipper edge as little as possible, okay? And I am actually going to burn this again. And I'm going to do the same thing to this side. Okay. So now I want to clip this in place. Now in step 41, at the end there, she shows a picture that we're supposed to face around all four edges, okay? Now top stitching over right here is quite thick going through all those layers. So use the hand crank if you have to or just go really slow over here, especially if you're using a domestic machine. Okay, so now we have to decide what is the top and what is the bottom because remember, we have two different panels here, okay? If you have one fabric on top and a different one on the bottom, that's where you're gonna determine, okay? So we wanna put the top with the top, the bottom with the bottom. In this gusset here, this is the bottom. This up here is the top, okay? So first of all, we wanna find our centers. 
Okay. Okay, that's my top. That's my bottom, okay? Now also, if you have a directional print on step number 42, she gives you arrows so that you can make sure that you're putting that directional print going the right way, okay? So now I wanna take my top centers and I wanna match them up. And I wanna put it all the way around, making sure there's no turns or anything like that on it. And we're putting them right sides together here, okay? This is a tester step from me. Put your zipper on the inside and your gusset on the outside. Because if you put your zipper on the outside, it might seem like it's not going to fit. And it's going to be really tight. Especially if you're using vinyl, because vinyl doesn't stretch, nor will your zipper. If it seems like the gusset is going to be bigger, then put the, the gusset on the outside. Okay, so once you've got it all clipped, kind of give it a tug, and your clips will move to your zipper. Okay, okay, now I want to baste all the way around using a 1 8 inch seam allowance, and I want to start at the top. So now we're going to attach our panel to our gusset. It is your choice as to whether you are going to put on your clear pocket or your exterior onto your gusset. Now, if you're gonna put on your exterior first, you can go down into the description and click on this timestamp for numbers 49 to 52. But if you are going to apply your final first, then follow steps 43 through 48. And that's where we're at right now. I will be doing both methods so that you can see all the steps. And then after I'm done, I'll let you know which one was easier. I want to mark my center point at the bottom. Okay, so now I want to go wrong side to wrong side. So this is my clear panel. This is the wrong side. This is the wrong side of my gusset, okay? Your zipper should be on the outside of this. So you should have the wrong side of your clear panel, center bottom, to the wrong side of your gusset. And the wrong side should be facing out on your gusset here. So I want to grab my center here. So there's my center. And I want to clip it. I'm going to turn it around. At this point, make sure that your zipper pull is on there. Take the wrong side of your center there and match it up to the top. Let me turn it this way so I can make sure to see that. There's my top. And then clip it. And now clip it going all the way around. Okay, now I want to share a tester's tip. She staples the clear vinyl corners to the fabric panels when basting them together. And she keeps them out of the seam allowance. So when you sew it around the corner, your edge stays right where you want it. Now this is going to feel like it's really not gonna fit in there. What she says is you can get a blow dryer and heat up your vinyl. Now the way I got this side to fit on is I also found the center of my panel on this side. Let me make a few more clips. Okay, so now that center clip, place it on your side gusset, on your side seam, okay? So I was able to put this on without snipping into my zipper. Try really hard to do that first. Now, if you do have to snip into your zipper to get around these edges here, what you need to do is make sure that you burn those snips to protect your zipper from fraying. Now, she makes a suggestion to unzip your zipper. I should have done this before I clipped all these, <laughs> all this on. And she sews gusset side up, okay? So you should sew it going this way. To base this on, I still have my standard presser foot, okay? I haven't switched out to a zipper foot.
and I can see my layers here. I can see that my clear vinyl is right where I want it. And then I'll use my hemostat so that the layers are right with themselves. Okay, so now we've completed that. Let me make sure everything looks good on the inside. Okay, and on the outside. Okay. And step number 44, she gives you two pictures of the way it's supposed to look. So here's the exterior of my clear panel and the exterior of my gusset and then the inside. So now let me show you how this is supposed to look once it's bound and your zipper is put in place, okay? It shouldn't be hard to zip up at all. Okay, like that. There's my bottom gusset. Side and side. Okay, and now the other side should look like this. Okay. okay, I'm just making sure that I've got it all right. Okay, my hook is at my bottom. Okay, okay, so now go ahead and unzip it. Turn it around. Okay, so here's my bottom because here's my gusset my bottom gusset. Here's the top. Now I want to grab my front panel, okay? And this is going to go on there like that, okay? So now I want to turn this all this way. Be real careful with that vinyl. Now we're on step number 47. We have this inside out, okay? Open up your pocket. And now I wanna put this right sides together, okay? Make sure that you've got the top to the top, the handle goes to the top portion, and the bottom goes to the bottom. See how we have our zipper gusset here and our hook? So this is the bottom here. Start at your bottom, clip the bottom to the bottom, the top to the top, and then go all the way around. And before I sew this, I wanna make sure that all my pieces are correct on here. Okay. This is my gusset right here for my other side and this is my bottom so I've got bottom to bottom okay also my hook is down here so that's the bottom and then this is the top and this is the top okay and that's where my handle is I can see my handles right here in my seam I am going through and making absolute sure before I base this on is because 
I've already done the whole thing once and accidentally put my panel in upside down. So after unpicking this whole panel, <laughs> I learned my lesson. Check twice, so once. Okay, so now I'm doing good and I know that everything is okay. So I'm going to go ahead and baste it all the way around using a 1 8 inch seam allowance. And because I have piping, I'm going to sew with my panel facing up. Okay, take a sneak peek in here and just kind of really go through and check all of your edges. Make sure everything got caught. Now the binding is the same for all the steps in this bag. So I'm going to show you with this panel, but I will skip ahead for all the other panels because there's no reason to make this tutorial any longer and have you sit through binding that I've already shown. So I'm going to place this back inside my zipper, being very careful with that zipper. Now the pattern calls for sewing your binding on using a 1 quarter inch seam allowance. Okay, I'm going to go a little bit more because this is the second time I'm sewing on this panel. So I want to make sure I go just a hair beyond my previous stitching because I stitched into the vinyl already. But I don't want to go so far in that I mess up my piping either. So I'm going to go just a little bit more than a quarter of an inch. And use your hemostat or your tool of choice to help you to get around these corners. look at everything make sure you were able to catch everything okay now we have to turn out this bag through this zipper here okay you've got to be very very careful with this zipper because we want to make sure that we do not damage this zipper at all I want to first of all do the zipper and then zip it up a little bit so that I can be aware of that zipper there. Okay, it's not putting so much pressure on the end. Okay, now be careful with this end over here too as well. Okay, that's the way it should look on this side, okay? My zipper on the top. My gusset. My zipper down here. Okay, so make sure that you're happy with everything. And now let's go on to the other panel. Okay, now we are on step 49 with the back panel. Okay, so this is the way the picture looks. Okay, and she's getting right sides to right side. Okay, and she's clipping them, matching the bottom, first of all. So you want to find the center, match up your bottom, go over to the top, do the same, center to center. First of all, put in your handle. And then go all the way around. Make sure that your side center and your side seam match up with each other. Okay, so now it's all clipped on. And now I'm going to base going all the way around using a 1 8 inch seam allowance.
Okay, check all your stitching. Make sure you caught everything. Right here, I missed it. Okay, so I need to repair that. Make sure. And remember, this is an eighth of an inch. You'll be doing the final pass at a quarter of an inch with your binding. So that'll catch anything that you miss. But you want to just really make sure. Let's see which one was the one that I didn't catch. Oh, it was right here. Okay, so I have to redo this portion here. So I'm going to get a sharp pair of scissors. Put a clip on this top so I know that when I'm going around the binding on this side that I've got to really pay attention to this corner because even though I caught everything it's really close to the edge okay, okay and I want to start at the bottom this is my top because that's where the handle is and then you know what to do with the binding we're gonna bind all the way around and then I'll be back now I am on step number 51 this is the clear vinyl panel and it's right side up top side up this is the hanging sleeve, and it is um, right side up as well, top side up. Now that is our first picture, and that's the way it looks. Now in the very next picture, the orientation to our clear vinyl sleeve has not changed. But the orientation to our hanging sleeve, our hanging panel, has. So we need to put our right sides together. matching up our centers and now when we open it out in the very next picture she shows you the orientation this should be top side up and top side up okay then when we turn it this way this should be upside down okay so now I want to base across here using a 1 8 inch seam allowance Okay, now we're on step number 52. And the next picture is with our panel hanging upside down because we have our handle down here. And this is the panel that we've just sewn. So now I want to place this on top of here using the same orientation. Match up your centers. And clip all the way around. So now my orientation is correct, okay, because this will go in there like that, okay, making sure, then this will be held like that, and it will be right side up, okay. Now I'm making sure everything is correct before I sew anything, okay. So now I want to close the sleeve like this, and I want to baste all the way around here using a 1 8 inch seam allowance.
So now all I have to do is bind up this side and this bag is complete. Wow, I really like this bag and the way it came out. Now I wanted to share with you which panel I thought went on easier. There were two different choices. There was step 43 to 48 or step 49 to 52. I have to say, I think 49 to 52 was easier and that was putting on the exterior first, okay? But that is for me. You may put on the clear vinyl first and feel that was easier. So you might want to just try them both and see how it works out for you because I know you're going to want to make more than one of these little bags. Now I really hope you liked this tutorial and it made it easier for you to make one of these bags. I try really hard to get as many steps and details in each one of the tutorials that I do. Now if you found any benefit to this tutorial, please like, share, and subscribe. It really helps me out and it really makes my day because it's not easy making these tutorials. But I have to say it is fun. <laughs> now be sure to post your make over at the Sophisticated Crafts Designs Facebook group. Because your posts inspire us all. Okay, until next time, I'll talk to you later. Bye.